is Ed Leguia. I was with the U.S. Army for three and a half years. Uh, I was with the 82nd Airborne. I served from 2001 till 2004. I did my tour in Iraq and Afghanistan. My name is Will Bowen. I served in the U.S. Army for four years, from 2002 to 2006. I was in 3rd ID, 3rd Brigade, and I did a tour in Iraq. So I think uh, I think people should know that um, the the army and the military is not just about killing people. Um, when I was over there, there was a, a, a very concerted effort to rebuild uh, the infrastructure of Iraq. We spent a lot of time and effort. Um, it wasn't just about uh, kill and capture, as as the military puts it. Um, <laughs> But uh, one thing uh, you should never ask uh, somebody in the military is if they killed somebody. Uh, also, as far as, you know, I think most people should know that every, a lot of military people are, you know, just good people. And they don't do it, they don't join the army just to kill or, just, or to be that badass. They just do it because they, they know it's right. So, and, and when people say, you know, join the army to kill, no, I mean, that's not really true. It happens, you know, there are things in Afghanistan and Iraq where I experienced where, you know, you, you know, it, you know, it happens, but that's not the whole point. And it's not what you do. It's not who you are. It's just you, based on your training. That's what you sign up for. So when it happens, it happens. But you don't look for it. You know, God knows. Nobody looks to see combat. Nobody sees. Nobody wants a friend to die. Nobody wants to be the experience and to be the whole Rambo thing. But when it happens, it happens. Hi, my name is Rob Castellero. I'm an economics major at USF. Um, I did one combat tour in Iraq. Uh, I got to see and do a lot of crazy things that uh, I don't think I would have done any other way. Uh, life in Iraq. Uh, if you like living in a hole for six months, that has to be about here. So if anything explodes over you, uh, it just passes right over you and doesn't hurt you. Um, not showering. I went uh, almost two months without taking a bath. Um, that was interesting. You don't really notice your own smell after about a week and a half, two weeks. Um, baby wipes only go so far. Um, the constant, you know, mortars being walked onto your position was uh, an experience. Getting woken up, having Hellfire rockets shot over your camp by uh, a helicopter pilot that forgot to disarm his weapons when he was going to land. Yeah, just the constant fear of, you know, am I going to make it out of here today? That was, that was interesting and made me a, a better person. I definitely learned a lot about myself because of it. All right, so uh, when I came back from Iraq, my family really didn't know what type of unit I was with. And uh, so I get back and I'm showing my family my award that I had gotten for doing something stupid. And uh, my aunt reads it and she, I can tell when she got to the part where she had read what I had done and her jaw just goes. And so she continues reading it and she like closes it, throws it at me and slaps me. And so my grandmother looks at her and is like, you know, Carolyn, why did you slap him? And so my, my aunt goes up, hands it to my grandmother, and my grandmother's sitting there reading it. And I proceed to get yelled at for about 15 to 20 minutes about, why did you do that? That's stupid. You shouldn't have done that. You risked your life. And uh, so what had happened was, we were in Iraq, and we were ta our position took mortars. So the first mortar came over our head, and artillery had been shooting all day, so we didn't really think anything of it. But the second one came, and it sounded closer, and so I was like, shit. And I grabbed my flak jacket, and I hit the deck, and I yelled, incoming. And then... The third mortar comes in and hits, and it lands about five, ten feet away from an ammo truck. So I mean, we got lucky there. And uh, so I'm running across to my to get into my hole for safety, and they're bringing the guys from across the street, the other unit, over to our position. And there's a guy that's got a big hole in his ankle, like right through. You can see the bone and the Achilles tendon and everything. It was really nasty. So I yelled, "Get him in a hole!" And then we gra I grabbed him, threw him in his fighting hole or in my fighting hole. And we start bandaging him up and we stabilize him and the corpsman comes over and we give him some morphine and start an IV and then we medevac him out. So, um, yeah, that, after that my family learned uh, what type of unit I was with. All they had known up to that point was that I did uh, nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare reconnaissance. And um, it, was, it was an interesting experience coming home to that and my family actually finding out where I was and what I had done.